Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How-To, and this is the Acer A515-43. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be taking a quick look and an overview of the Acer Aspire, or Aspire 5, or the A414-43, whatever you want to call it. Now, there are an absolute ton of sub-models of this particular laptop, so this is a guide, and obviously, do check the model numbers. There's a R19L, and there's a G version. There's all sorts of different versions, different configurations. So I'll go through the config of this one, let you know what's in it, and give you my thoughts on it and an overall impression. So first of all, I'll run through some of the specs. So some of the highlights, it's a Ryzen 5 3500U, which is a four core, eight thread processor, which also features the integrated Vega 8 graphics. The model comes with a base specification of eight gigs of RAM, which is spread out between two four gig sticks. It also comes with a 256 gig NVMe PCI Express 3 times two drive, not a times four, unfortunately. Also has a option for an additional hard disk drive or a SSD if you wish to as an upgrade. And it also comes with a full size keyboard or full size for a laptop, including a number pad key. The keyboard itself is a really nice chiclet style keyboard. And I actually find it very comfortable to type on over extended periods. And actually I found myself using this laptop more so than I have my desktop over the last few days. The screen is also quite a highlight on this one. It's a 15.6 inch IPS screen with fantastic view and angles. It lacks slightly in brightness, but what it lacks in brightness actually makes up for in color accuracy and viewable angles. The unit itself is pretty nippy in operation, web browsing, emails, all those kinds of things, as you'd expect, very quick, very easy, very nice to use. Gaming is definitely a possibility on this with the Vega 8 graphics and certain older esports titles run quite happily at 1080p with lower settings at 60 frames per second, although for some AAA titles, you will have to reduce your expectations accordingly. The trackpad on the laptop is very nice, very responsive and very precise. There's limited flex to the actual unit itself, so when you're actually using it, it does feel very nice. It's uh, not a glass unit, obviously at this price point, which actually we didn't discuss the price point of this at the moment, currently in the UK, the suggested retail price is 549, which for me personally, I think is way too much. But at the moment, Courage PC World in the UK have got this on offer at 399, which for 400 pounds, this does pack an awful lot of punch for the money. Now the unit also offers connectivity options with both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi AC. So connectivity wise, you shouldn't have any problems at all. There's also a gigabit ethernet if you so wish. Uh, obviously for a laptop, it probably makes less sense for a, uh, an extra wire to be connected. But if you're using it in maybe a home office or where you've got limited space, but you need a laptop, but you need that full-time connectivity, the Gigabit Ethernet I find to be very reliable and works really well. The software installed on it from the factory or, well, probably not from the factory, but from PC World, because this, like I said, this unit was slightly different from PC World. From the factory, you're gonna come with the usual Acer bloatware, things that you don't necessarily need, game loft, all those kinds of things. It actually comes with Windows 10 Home as standard. Some of the models that I've seen on the market actually come with Windows 10 S, which is the cut down version, which from what I can tell can be upgraded straight away to Windows 10 Home. Obviously, if you do wish to put Windows 10 Professional on there, that's a very easy thing to do. You can just upgrade it from the Windows menus, pay for a license, and then you have Windows 10 Pro. So if you are using this in a kind of professional business environment or connecting to a domain, then you can do that quite easily. So let's take a quick look at some of the specs which have been highlighted by the stickers. So obviously we've got Ryzen 5, which is the processor. We've got Radeon Vega graphics, which is the graphics built in, which actually is a strong contender. This is what makes this laptop stand out slightly from the crowd. There is another version of this which comes with a Ryzen 3 processor, which has the lesser Vega graphics built in. Also comes at a slightly reduced price, but has reduced RAM as well. That one you can get for around 329, but to be completely honest with you, unless you're very, very strapped for cash, I would give that one a miss and go for this one instead. For double the RAM, double the cores, much better graphics, this one is the one to go for. Moving over to the speaker, so we've got the thin design. Now actually, that is one of the things which impressed me with this first of all. It is actually very thin and it is very light. Most of the construction is plastic. The hinge lid is aluminium, so there's a little bit of protection from the top there, which gives it actually a nice premium feel 
but still doesn't add to the weight because of being aluminium, it's still quite lightweight. You've got relatively narrow bezels. It does actually highlight that on here, it's saying narrow, narrow bezels. Uh, in my opinion, they're not the narrowest I've seen, and obviously the, uh, the head and the chin are still quite wide due to obviously the constraints of how it's made. In the top section, we've also got a microphone and a HD webcam. So if you're using this for Skype calls or Discord, things like that, then connectivity that way isn't gonna be a problem. The webcam isn't fantastic, as I'll show you now. This is a microphone test of the Acer Aspire A515-43. Sound quality isn't particularly bad. I think you could probably get away with this for most microphone chats and Skype calls, those kinds of things, uh, things like Discord. Obviously, it's not really production quality. You want to plug in a mic for that kind of thing. But anyway, back to Mike. It gets the job done. It's by no means a uh, top quality streaming device, but it is useful. The sound quality is okay. And obviously, being built in, it means you don't have to plug in a separate webcam, headset, microphone, all that kind of stuff. But obviously, if you want to do that, then that is an option. Uh, they're also making a deal about the connectivity. So you've got ultra fast wireless speed. So that's uh, 802.11ac. You've also got the IPS wide angle viewing angles, which actually is really good. Even on this angle, I can still quite clearly see what is on the screen. No problems with viewing angles whatsoever. Like I said, the screen does lack slightly in brightness, um, which for some may be a deal breaker. If you're planning to use this in a sunny area, outside on the patio, that kind of thing, you may struggle. If that is gonna be a problem, then I would suggest going slightly higher up the range and getting a different model altogether. But for most uses, around the home, in the office, taken out, I think you're gonna have no problems whatsoever. An alternative use, obviously, they do have a HDMI port. So if you wanted to and you do find the screen to be a little bit dim, or maybe your workflow needs two monitors, then there is an HDMI port on the side which you can quite easily plug in. And Windows is actually very good at recognizing additional monitors now and adjusting your workflow accordingly. So obviously if brightness is gonna be an issue and you want a super bright punchy screen, there's no reason why you can't add on an additional monitor, which maybe will cost you around about hundred pounds or so, and then you'd have a fantastic office setup. So let's take a closer look at some of the connectivity. So on this side, we've got our power jack, which actually is quite a nice power jack. It seems to be quite secure. Doesn't seem to be any wobble or flex there. Next to that, we've got our gigabit ethernet, which has got this weird kind of spring clamp thing, which I'm not a great fan of. I know this is to do with the aesthetics and to make it nice and thin and light. And obviously if you had a full size port there, it would make things quite a bit chunkier here. Um, it is a little bit fiddly to put a network cable in, if I'm completely honest. Next to that, you've got your HDMI output. Then you've got your USB 2. And next to that, you've got a USB 3, Gen 3.1, Type A. No Type C on this, unfortunately, again, at this price point, it's probably to be expected. I don't think it's a deal breaker to not have USB type C. Next to that, you've got our combination headset port. So that is microphone and earphones. So that's using the TRRS standard. If you want to use a normal headphone and microphone, you can get a splitter. Or if you just plug in a, a normal pair of headphones, they seem to work just fine. Nothing much on the front, no card reader, unfortunately. Again, at this price point, that's to be expected. Uh, moving around to this side, we've got our single USB Type 2 port and a Kensington lock. On the rear, we've got the outlet for the fan and also a couple of LEDs to let you know charging status and your power status. The whole thing hinges quite nicely and it does appear to be quite strong. There is a little bit of flex and a little bit of wobble as you can probably make out there. So it's, uh, it's by no means super solid, but certainly gets the job done. and is totally what you'd expect at this kind of price point. Which again, I know I keep on harping on about the price of it, but 400 pounds for a laptop of this specification with an IPS screen and with the Ryzen 5 processor, I think is fantastic value for money. So what do we actually think of this overall? Now I've used this for a few days and I've played some Counter-Strike, I've played some Rocket League, I've done some web documents, watched some YouTube videos, watched some films, and I'll be completely honest with you, I am actually blown away by this. How they managed to fit all this processing power in a relatively small package for a ridiculously low price still does kind of blow my mind a little bit. So for 400 pounds, you've essentially got a gaming laptop, which can be used as a business laptop as well and all those kinds of things, but it just really covers all the bases. Now this is being an upgrade from my Surface Pro 3, which is uh, gonna be put into retirement. Now that was using a Intel i7 processor with very similar specs 
256 gig hard drive, eight gigs of RAM, but this thing absolutely blows it out of the water. Now, when I bought the Surface Pro 3, it was worth in the region of about 1,500 pounds. So for 400 pounds and to absolutely trounce it in general productivity and daily use, it's actually quite surprising. Obviously, there isn't a touch screen. It's a larger form factor, so that kind of counts against it. But essentially, I think it's a fantastic device and you'd be hard pressed to do much better for the money. So let me know, what do you think of the Acer A515? I think it's a fantastic value for money proposition. For those of you who are looking to buy Christmas gifts at the moment, I would suggest getting down to PC Broad and getting one of these before the uh, stocks run out. My only concern is, being that it is from PC Broad, you do have to go through some of the palaver, which uh, I'll go into more detail if you check out the video up here. And you can see my uh, actual buying experience wasn't particularly good. Although the product itself has uh, done pretty well. So I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. This has been the Acer A515-43. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.